Thank you for checking out this No Spoilers movie review. This is for the second episode of the Creep Show series on Shudder. I originally was told that I would only be getting the first episode as a screener so I could do a review ahead of it hitting Shudder, but apparently it's going to happen for all of these, so I'm excited about that. So I will be able to continually throughout this first season of this of the show bring you these reviews ahead of time. But like I said, no spoilers. I'm not going to ruin things for you. So, um, getting off on the on the kind of wrong foot for me personally, but I know a lot of people probably like this. Um, the first episode, it didn't really bother me. Like, they're kind of host. Uh, this uh, kind of, like, skeleton-y, mummy-type guy. Uh, he was kind of cool. I, I like I like the design of him. I like how he looks. I like the idea of him. But in the second one, I was kind of like, eh, I don't feel like I need it. I just want the stories, kind of. And I just want more of the stories, to be honest. Because, like I said in the first one, it seems like at least that first story, the Grey Matter one, seemed like it needed more time to develop and get some more things going. And um, I just kind of want that, you know, like doing one hour per episode would be amazing. Even uh, jumping it up to a half hour for each one would really help a lot for some of them. But, you know, it is what it is. And I know there are going to be some people out there who are like, I love that kind of like um, connection of the stories with that main character. That's fine. It's just a personal thing. So the first story on episode two is Bad Wolf Down. This is written and directed by Rob Schraub, who wrote the script for the sh uh, the movie Monster House. He had the uh, Zemeckis film Monster House, which I thought was good for being like a kid's horror thing. I uh, saw it a long time ago, so I'm going off of memory here. Now, um, I mainly know him from something super, super nerdy. I'm going to reveal something about myself here. He is involved with a podcast called Fear Initiative, which is a tabletop gaming horror podcast through the Blumhouse Podcasting Network. Yes, Blumhouse has a podcasting network. Yes, I'm into tabletop gaming, Dungeons and Dragons, Pathfinder, all those types of nerdy things. So I listen to that podcast, and Rob Schraub is on it. He's one of the players, but sometimes he's not on it because work. And I think part of it was for, you know, doing this. Uh, so good on him. So this one stars Jeffrey Combs and Kid Cudi. Those are the big names in it that they kind of put out there. Obviously, all of us horror fans know Jeffrey Combs from Reanimator, from Castle Freak, you name it. Um, what was the most recent one I saw him in? Uh, Would You Rather, I think, was was it. Not a great movie, but he did a really good job. He always does a great job. Um, so that's the thing. Like my, One of my favorite parts of this particular story bad wolf down was watching jeffrey combs in the role that he was in because he had a lot of fun with it you could tell and he just poured a lot into it and when he was on the screen he stole the show so um if you're a jeffrey combs fan like i am you just kind of geek out a little bit when he's doing that role and you'll see what you'll see what role it is if you're gonna watch it so the title, um, the title as well as something er very early on in it within like the first minute or so that's shown on screen lets you know exactly where it's going pretty much. And, and so for that reason, I feel like when you do that, when you let people know up front, this is what it's going to be, you kind of either have to have some sort of twist that tells people, oh, no, 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 it's not going to be that. Or you have to deliver on the gore, on the violence, on, you know, just being fun and cool and gory, to say the least. And I feel like this delivers on some comedy that works well, but there is some comedy in it that actually doesn't work well at all. There was one line in particular, I'm not going to say what it is, but you know what I'm talking about, I think, that the line was said and it's supposed to be funny, and I was like, ugh. Like, not funny at all. Like, definitely not funny. But um, that should have been cut out. But there is some good comedy, especially in the end. There is some good violence, good gore in the end that does feel like a nice payout. Pay off, I should say. But one of the problems is it feels slow. It's weird because, let me, well, let me go through my notes here. Um, oh, first of all, the music is overly dramatic at, at certain parts. I think they were actually going for that to make it like a little bit funny, a little bit ridiculous, but it actually kind of seemed a little over the line in my opinion. So, sorry. Uh, the acting overall is okay, but Jeffrey Combs, like I said, great. Um, I don't think I saw enough of Kid Cudi, by the way. I, um, he seemed, like in certain moments, he seemed kind of, uh, and in other moments, he seemed like he was really handling it 
and doing pretty well. So I, I need to see more of him in an acting role to really form an opinion because I saw a little bit of everything. Um, so there's a really, really smart. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to talk about it at the end, actually. Sorry about that. Okay. So the good gory payoff happens at the end mixed with comedy. And I'm very, very happy about that. But like I was saying, the early portion, sorry to repeat myself a little bit. It felt like it was rushed and dragged at the same time up until that end portion where I said there's a good payoff, uh, which is really odd to say about a film that's actually less than 20 minutes in its runtime to be like, it's, it's rushed and feels like it's dragging at the same time. It's really weird. And you'll know what I'm talking about. It's kind of like you could have done something a little bit different with the story to keep it moving for that amount of time because it's not a whole lot of time. It seemed like they were kind of wasting time a little bit to get to what they needed to get to. So I was kind of like, that's a little weird. Um, but that's the problem. Like, I just wrote it down. Like, it's hard to get a balance when you're going with something so short. Like, you really need to find this kind of medium of, like, moving it fast enough but having enough story development. And I could see it being really, really tough to nail these types of things. So I did want to say real quick that there was a very, very smart moment in this film where they, there was something that they had to do. And I don't want to ruin it, so I'm going to be careful with my words. There's something they had to do with the film, and it was going to involve CG. And I think they knew their limitations. They're very smart about it, and they're like, look, we don't have a high budget. It would take a lot to make the CG look how it should and be impressive and be really good. So they use a technique, they actually went to the comic panels to do that portion of the story, which I felt was kind of genius, to be honest, because some people would be like, oh, it's a cop out, I wanted to see the CG. But no, I just think it was really smart because you're working within the confines of what you know you have as a budget or time-wise or effort, like whatever you can do. And it worked because Creepshow is steeped in comic anyway. So And they've already established in the first episode that they're going to incorporate that. They're going to have, you know, some pages of comics and show comic panels throughout the show. So it worked. It worked really well. I was actually really impressed with that when it happened. I was like, oh, I see what they did there. Very smart. And then the practical effects in the end I thought were very nice. Very nice. They don't give you a whole lot of the practical effects like, they could have given you a lot more, but I, um, like I said, I, I know they had to keep it low budget, and it, it was enough. It was enough. So, I would say overall, there's some issues with this, but there's some really good things about it. So, I, I put it in the okay category for me. It's not my favorite by any stretch of the imagination of the four, um, but I thought it was decent. There was, there was enough to enjoy there. So, good job, Rob. Okay, then we get to the next one, The Finger, which I am going to tell you off right off the bat, that this one is my favorite uh, of the four I've seen thus far. I know it's not a lot to pick from, but if you watch my first review, you know I had a lot of really awesome things to say about House of the Head, and I still really like that, but I like the finger even more, and I will tell you why. Oh, real quick, I guess I should give a star rating, in my opinion, to Bad Wolf Down. Am I doing that? Did I? I don't even remember I did that in the first one. So Bad Wolf Down, I'm going to give it a two. I'm going to give it a two. No, two and a half. I was going to give it a two because of the pacing issues and the kind of like feeling like it's dragging but rushed at the same time. But the gore and that smart uh, smart thing they did to avoid CG, I thought was really good. That's enough to take it up to two and a half. Anyway, now The Finger. Directed by Greg, Nic bleh, directed by Greg Nicotero, who's also the showrunner, who we all know Greg Nicotero. Um, Written by David J. Shao. Now, he wrote scripts for Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, Critters 3, Critters 4, and the original Crow screenplay. He didn't do the story because that's a James O'Barr graphic novel, but he did do the screenplay, which I got to imagine that's not easy to take from that material and make it into a screenplay, and I thought he did a really good job with that screenplay. So, so this has DJ Qualls in it. Yes, DJ Qualls from, well, probably best known from his comedic role in the movie Road Trip, which I enjoyed, and I really enjoyed him in Road Trip. I I, th I still enjoy him in Road Trip. I'll watch it every now and then when, I, when the feeling hits me. But I gotta say, DJ Qualls does an 
excellent, excellent job in this role. I mean, he brought his A-game, he was there to legitimately act, and he did phenomenal. I was pretty blown away by it. I was very happy with his performance. It's very enjoyable. It's very fun. DJ, DJ Qualls, killing it, dude. So it starts in it with a very quirky feel, which makes it very fun. There's this thing they do where they have the uh, the main character does voiceover narration for uh, a large portion of, well, through actually throughout it, not consistently, but like sporadically throughout, But and that's how they start. And then they also have moments where they're breaking the fourth wall, and the main character speaks directly to the camera. Now, when you do things like these, the narration and breaking the fourth wall and speaking to the camera... It can be tricky to get it right and for it to feel natural. But within the context of the story, it really, really works. And I feel like it, it, this story, it just has everything. With the way it was shot, the tone of it, the acting, the way it was written, it has everything. It is funny. It is interesting. It's kind of tense at times. It's creepy. It's um, quirky. I mean, it's just got everything going on. And to be honest... That's what I want more of with these stories going forward. Like, that's what I'm hoping for. When I watched this one and I got done, I was like, that's it. That's what I want every single one of the stories in Creepshow to be like. It was great. Um, So, okay, I talked about the voiceover. There's a lot of fun and intrigue in it. Like I was saying, it's fun and it's interesting. But there is a lot of intrigue because the story, well, it's not wholly... um, original because at this point as you know as we all know not it's hard to have a very original idea we're all recycling things to some degree but it feels kind of original it has pieces of things you can recognize but as a whole it feels kind of original and it's uh, a cool concept it's a very fun cool concept i really like it so there's another instance in this actually not as much so as in uh bad wolf down but there is one where they kind of they do something creative to get around the limitations of CG. Um, And yeah, so it's more of a thing of like shooting. So you're seeing something in the background that's not focused on and then also shooting where it's kind of like the reflection of something. So you don't have, have to make sure that the CG looks all that great, but you can just mainly do shapes and it really works. It does. And it works within the context of the story too. Like you don't even really question it to be honest. But when you do see the practical effects, they did a great job with practical effects. And there's something employed in particular in the story that I was very happy about because I love practical effects and I love when people put even more into it and make it... I'm trying to figure out how not to, to ruin this by saying it. Putting... Okay, I'll just say putting more effort into it and it, you'll understand what I mean. There's a the practical effects that were created were used more than I thought they were going to be within this film. And I really liked that and they worked really well and they looked great. Um, And then the last thing I have to say about this particular story is that I became aware while I was watching this, that I literally was smiling while I was watching that particular one, the finger. Um, I don't do that often. I don't usually emote when I'm watching things by myself. I don't laugh. I don't chuckle when I'm watching things by myself unless the things are very enjoyable, very fun, very funny. And um, I chuckled a little bit out loud and I just had like a smile plastered on my face the whole time because it was just so fun and enjoyable and I loved it. Yes, more of this. More of David J. Shao, more of Greg Nicotero, more of DJ Qualls, more of these... I won't say perfectly, but very well-crafted stories. Uh, And it was a little bit more than the 20-minute runtime, if that's what it takes. Let's go. I mean, it wasn't quite at the half hour or, like, close to an hour that I was talking about, but this proves that you don't have to go there. Like, you don't necessarily have to. Like, House of the Head, same thing. You didn't have to. It was about 20 minutes, and it, it did what it needed to do. But I think the finger's even better, so... Very happy with this episode. Um, I would rank them at the moment, my my order of stories. I'd say my number one, obviously, is The Finger. My number two is House of the Head. My number three is Bad Wolf Down. And my number four is Gray Matter. Uh, but, yeah, it, it's a good experience. It's fun. So what am I going to give The Finger out of five stars? 
keeping within the context of what it is, it is very short. Um, there are, com you know, it is, it's not like huge and grandiose and amazing, but it is good. I'm going to give it four out of five stars. I quite liked it. I thought it was really good. If you're going to, I could give it four and a half stars, though, if we're just doing it in relation to being like a very short film in an anthology. I go four and a half. It's good. I really like it. So anyway, thank you everyone for checking this out. Please help me out. Hit that subscribe. Um, that really encourages me and helps me. I have a Patreon page now if you want to. Um, I have a minimum thing of like one dollar if you want to just give me a dollar. But there's some other things that get you stuff in my tiers. So check it out. It's just look for horror movie reviews with Carlin Cook or just search Carlin Cook. You'll find it. But um, the big thing is hit that subscribe. I appreciate it. Put some comments down there either before you see this, or not this, but before you see the second episode of Creep Show, or after, or both, and let's talk about it. But thank you for checking this out, and until next time, keep it brutal.